forward. It would be impossible for me to explain how these talks were given, for I would only be giving my opinion, which might be incorrect, but I can tell you the feeling I had. For several months prior to giving these talks, I would awaken from my sleep at night, hearing a voice apparently speaking to me. I thought I was dreaming, yet it was not a dream, it was a real voice. Whether it was my own or another, I cannot say. The peculiar thing was that I could hear this voice and reason what it said at the same time. After many of these experiences, the voices said that special talks would be given when the proper time arrived. The time did arrive, and the voice spoke, instructing that the talks would begin on a certain night, when those attending were all chosen. Thereafter, no one must be allowed in during the series of talks, and these talks must be taken down in shorthand and recorded on a wire recorder so that nothing would be lost. When the night for those talks duly arrived, I took my place in the auditorium. I was quite concerned about what was going to happen, when I felt as if a thousand volts of electricity was passing through me. I did not lose consciousness, although I became aware of a magnificent power, a consciousness far above my own. Yet we seemed to be linked together in some mysterious way, which I cannot explain because I do not know. Then I could hear my voice, yet it was different, speaking with great authority, an authority of one who absolutely knew. I listened very attentively to what was said and could understand with a clarity that I never had before. The language was perfect, without a flaw, without a hesitation. For a whole hour this went on. I was amazed because I knew that no human brain could duplicate such a feat, yet this feat was repeated each week for fourteen weeks. Only when I heard the talks on a way recorder did I know that something had taken place. I wondered, and I am still wondering, about the wonder of it all. You can read for yourselves what was said, and it gives you the comfort and satisfaction that it gave me, and also those who had the privilege of hearing these words spoken, then they had not been spoken in vain. A few of the many experiences of students who were present have been recorded in the next few pages. M. McDonald Bain Introduction Talks given through Dr. McMonald Bain. Transcription and description given by Miss Baggett Smith. A transfiguration experience is never to be forgotten. In the spring of 1948, a series of talks was given at Eskom House in Johannesburg, South Africa. To those who were chosen to hear them, this was a unique and unforgettable experience. No one who heard them could ever be the same again. They were hours of the highest spiritual growth and understanding. It was as though a veil were torn from our eyes and we could see clearly. The veritable presence of the Master becomes so strong a reality to us that it has never faded but grown in intensity and vividness. As always, since that time, when we lift our minds to spiritual things, suddenly we know the Master is besides us. The power of the Father is within and all is well. It was not the actual words that made these lectures so amazing. It was the way they were delivered. The word themselves will ring in our memories forever, but the greatest truth was shown to us without words, and no description could ever convey the tremendous force of the presence of the Master, and through him, the love of the Father, distinct evidence more real than anything physical around us. As the lecturer entered, he was a kindly, smiling man we all knew so well. After a pause of silence, he seemed to breathe himself out of his body in a sudden gasp, leaving it swaying without control. Then suddenly an amazing change took place, a short, sharp intake of breath, and the very master was present in the same body but utterly different. We knew perfectly well that the lecturer was still the man we had all known and respected for years, but at the same time he was someone completely different. The change was so startling that our benumbed senses could scarcely credit it, but at the same time it was true, and we knew it was true. The man before us now appeared unusually tall, much taller than the lecturer himself. Words cannot tell the strength of this astounding truth, but it was so. We were forced to believe it beyond the evidence of our ordinary senses. Here now before us was a man, commanding of aspect, austere of a great authority, with brilliant eyes and an assurance of power. Straight and tall he stood before us with deep solemnity, he pronounced his regular greeting. May peace I bring to you. As the speaker progressed and became more understanding, the greeting changed to, My peace and my love I bring to you and later to, my peace and my blessings I bring to you. The blessing was given with two first fingers of the right hand, raised in the manner of a king, and lo, our hearts bowed before its majesty. A quietness spread through the hall, a vibrating power like a stream of warmth passed through our bodies, burning whatever part was imperfect and healing as it flowed. As one talk followed the other, we could feel our own vibrations rise and our understanding clarified and lifted to a plane far beyond our everyday life. In dawning comprehension we listened to truth greater than we had ever heard, and yet to our wondering astonishment we realized they were the same statements we had heard and read since infancy. But only now did we understand their meaning. 
Suddenly, the lightning truth flashed into our minds, and at last we knew the power of the Master first said so many years ago. And then his truth became for us reality, part of our very being to be held, precious in a golden silence from now on into eternity. Each word fell deliberately, with never a moment of hesitation, almost like drops of water or jewels falling one after another into the pool of silence deep around us. Each sentence was a perfect construction, spoken effortlessly and with no pause for thought. Gradually we came to know quite simply, and without wonder, that we were not the only people present. Among us were those whom we loved, whom had passed on ahead, while beyond them, in ever-widening circles, ranged thousands of higher entities. The Master would address us all together, and then, in regard to the deeper things of life, we would be given just what each would grasp. We in earthly bodies were addressed as, You of mortal sense while the Master would raise his eyes and speak directly to those who had lately passed on, as to the minds who had gained in breadth of perception, who now knew the joy of a plane more spiritual and lovely and infinitely free. And then in awe we listened while the Master spoke to those who had more nearly approached his highest perfection. High above us we felt them, and far beyond us, row upon row, but no one moved or turned ahead as our eyes were held by the Master. Our bodies had long since faded from our senses. They were simply in a band, glued in a mobility, as it were, and it would take a definite effort to move them in any way. The Master would bless us each in turn, first us of mortal sense, and then the Spirit advanced so high above us, and His voice would warm to their great perception. In us He perceived a root sense of separation, in them a unity, that was a relief of joy to Him. How small we felt, how utterly unworthy! teeny, lowly people, almost infants, reaching up uncomprehending hands, so it was still a mystery. But gradually we grew in the stature of our own minds and our own self-respect. In daily life we found ourselves leading, where before we had stepped definitely back. Our voice came with unexpected insurance and authority. We too seemed to grow taller and to tread more lightly, as if the spirit self was growing stronger than the physical self. Some of us saw glorious colors behind the lecture, waves of purple and gold so glowing that it almost hurt the eyes. To some a slantwise cross was visible, to some a thick shaft of brilliant white light pouring into the top of his head, while many saw the long red gold hair and beard, and heavenly music and bells were heard in the background as he spoke. It became increasingly clear to us that the Master had come to give us his age-old message, I come to show you the Father. How often had we heard it before, but with blinded senses, now we began to understand. We learned of the Master Jesus, himself a man as we were, highly sensitive, developed, perceiving aware as we were not, of the wonder of the Christ within, the Son of the living God. He and the Christ and his Father were one being. Of himself he could do nothing, but identified with the Christ, one with the Father. He could do all things and have dominion over all things. As the talks commenced, his voice was always grave and austere, as from a distance, sure and firm, as a great leader speaking to followers searching for knowledge. But as he talked, his voice warmed to us. His eyes shone with lovingness and a delight in our response and our understanding of his spirit. The listeners grew more and more numerous, and now and then, in speaking of the Father, he would be overcome with his own emotion of the love so aroused. His voice would fade away and entirely forgetful to us. Suddenly he would so lose himself in the love of his Father that it was though an actual being was between us. He spoke to one much nearer than we were to someone so close as to be nearer than breathing. He would stand wrapped in the glory of the Godhead. He would murmur directly to his Father. Sometimes we heard the words, Father, I love thee, I love thee, and I love those that thou hast given me, thy children. I thank thee for them. In a pause his face was lit with a love of ineffable tenderness, a light of pure ecstasy transfigured. His features, almost blinding in its intensity, our eyes could not bear the brilliance that shone from his face. It was as though he had entered into some holy temple of love, such as we could not comprehend. In awe we gazed, the presence of the Father so strong, so tangible, so vivid, as to be far more real than the people around us. They faded. He was there, strong, powerful, in glory beyond glory. And we too began to know the Father, an actively loving being, no mere passive Godhead, but a Father, powerful in guidance, in achieving all the Son could wish a loving Father with arms around him, sheltering him in an ecstasy of peace, a love shown through his presence, embracing all of us, and practically universally forcing us to realize the truth as a truth real beyond anything that could be touched or seen, the truth of the presence of God, 
a loving, active, positive, dynamic father, a silent partner at our shoulder always, a God who traveled home with us, came in at the gate with us, protecting us so that evermore no fear would enter into our homes or lives. The love of the Father became an unmistakable reality. No words of the Master gave us that realization. It was His own intense, burning, joyful love of the Father that forced His knowledge upon us. And because of this belonging to the Father, the Son was filled with the peace and the glory of happiness that was eternal and infinite. And as He ascended again to His Father, He called us His disciples, and He left us with His assurance. My peace and my love, my blessing, I leave with you to remain with you. At that time we felt that that was the end, and we longed for the wonder of the talks over again, but twice more he came, with a space of several months between. At these times he spoke differently, bidding us search our hearts to see how much we had progressed along the path of love that he had shown us. He asked us, Is your faith so great that now you could not walk upon the water? And again, does your love for the Father order all your thoughts and deeds? Do you live in the love to the exclusion of all else? How deeply shamed we felt at the little we had done, and how unworthy we knew ourselves to be at the honor of his coming. The speaker continues to lecture week by week, and often the master, quite visibly, takes over his body for an amazing moment, just at the end, to give us a solemn blessing. The transfiguration is complete, with gown, face, beard, and hair showing through the brilliant light above him. My love and my peace remain with you. So in daily life we know that the Master is beside us, and reverently we tread the earth with whom he called his disciples, with the sure knowledge in our hearts of the undying Christ, alive and present in the world today. Mrs. Patterson said, Words are inadequate to express what I saw and felt when our Master spoke to us through the doctor. For a few seconds I was aware of a silence, unlike anything I had ever experienced. It seemed that I was suddenly transported into another world. Then I saw the whole outline of the doctor's body change. His face took on quite a different expression, and beams of light radiated from him. The face of the master showed up clearly. The auditorium was charged with power and light. At the time I did not realize it, but a great change took place within myself. I was left with a deep feeling of security in a living Christ, which is everything to me. Mrs. Gilbert, a medium who has traveled the world, states, I have been a medium for over thirty years, but I have never witnessed anything like I saw with the transfiguration of the Master. The light that shone from him was so great that I had to close my eyes. I have never heard music so clearly before. The auditorium was filled with those who had gone on before us. What joy it was to listen to the voice that was clear, distinct, without a flaw or an error, for over an hour. No human being could be capable of such oratory. Mrs. S. A. and E. A. Arnett said, the greatest thing in our life has happened, that the Master showed himself. His face clearly shone forth, bright blue eyes with reddish auburn beard and hair down to his shoulders. The light that shone from him was more than our eyes could stand. Then we got accustomed to the brilliant light and we could watch every movement. It was a thrilling experience we will never forget. His words were perfectly formed and not a pause or a mistake did he make for over an hour. It was this that amazed us most. The form of the doctor grew a few inches as the master overshadowed him. This was the first experience we ever had in transfiguration, although we have heard much about it. Mr. A. Thomas states, I am a most practical and critical person, being an engineer. I was always doubtful about what others saw and heard, and although I have read much on the subject of mediumship, I was not convinced. But when I saw with my own eyes a light so bright that I had to close them, for it was some time before I accustomed my sight to the brilliance. Then to see the face that is so familiar in many pictures of the Master, I was convinced that it was true. The Master's voice and speech were more than perfect. It is doubtful if any human being could perform such oratory. Although the doctor is a good speaker, I know he could not perform such a feat. My wife and her mother attended those talks, and they also saw and heard the same as I did. All present have testified. Divine Healing of Mind and Body, Talk 1 I am the resurrection and the life, the love of God. I am myself resurrection and life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies, and no one who lives and believes in me will ever die. God is love and love is God, yet no one knows what it is. We only know that it is. Perhaps you have been theorizing, never do this. You must let the truth unfold without suggestions from outside, and you must not come to a conclusion, for this closes the avenue to truth. 
Love is the center of the whole universe, and from this center a continuous flow of love flows through every soul and through everything that lives. Through flowers, through animals, through human beings and angels, this same love flows continuously from its central font, forever expressing itself in its true nature. Love is the affinity in the minerals. Love is the essence in the flowers. Love is expressed in the animal nature. In man, love is expressed in affection, and when fully realized, the whole being is filled with it, and every cell in the body becomes vitalized. There is no other power in the world but love. It is the only true power in heaven and on earth, for it is eternal and ever-present evermore. The outer will pass away, but love shall forever be, for it is the omnipresence of God. Theorizing on love is but a mental aspect of it. To theorize on what love is, is to lose its power. You are the creation of the infinite life, which is love, and love expresses itself in its true nature when understood and realized in this way. All great souls upon the earth are expressing this love in different ways in different parts of the world. Suggestions come from outside, but you cannot understand the truth from suggestions that arise from outside yourself. Therefore, do not come to any conclusion in regard to the truth, for the truth is unfathomable and eternal. I am ever-present, expressing myself in my divine nature, which is eternal. You must accept this, yet you must not come to conclusions of what it is, or what it is not. Remember, this mighty power is waiting to unfold in you. You are the vehicle prepared by it. Your soul is the vehicle through which it will flow. To be conscious of this is the secret of the God-man. What is space? You are now learning the rapidity of thought transference which is between you and the mind which is influencing you. These thoughts know nothing of distance. Nathaniel asked, Whence do you know me? Even before Philip called you, while you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Truly I say to all of you that from now on you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending to the Son of Man. You have already witnessed this truth. All are angels in the making. You are born angels. The angelic birth exists in you. This is the love of God. Some angels now existing are those who once lived on one planet or another. The whole universe is one complete whole expressing the divine nature of love. Love is the holy cohesive quality, the only power that can sustain all things and is bringing about its own perfection. There is never anything wrong where love exists, for it is complete in and of itself. There is nothing that can interfere with the current of pure thought directed from life, for really there is no distance. The only necessity is a condition of receptivity. It is now possible to receive this wonderful gift to the Father that is being poured out eternally. You can experience it for yourself by opening yourselves up to it. You do not receive it from the external, only know that it is eagerly waiting to express itself from the very center of your being. You must become consciously aware of it, and when you are consciously aware of it, then you will experience it in every cell of your body, in your surrounding, in your friends, in your business place, your home, all can be filled with it. And there is nothing that can withstand it. It is so solid in its nature that it interpenetrates every single particle of substance that exists in the universe. It supports the whole universe, and it gives breath and life. I am the life and love. All your thoughts of love and healing, sent out even without any special direction, are caught up in the stream, and they help all. Remember, nothing is lost in this world of thought charged with love. Space is a wrong idea. It belongs to separation. But in reality, there is no separation. Let your hearts and minds rest undisturbed in the realization of the omnipresence of God. Even the child will come to know that there is no space or distance, for you all dwell in God, and there is absolutely nothing outside of God. By my own experiences, I have found the flesh changes through the conscious awareness of the divine essence of love. It is the power that creates all things and attracts everything to it. For God, who made the world and all things therein, and who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he ministered unto by human hands, nor is he in need of anything, for it is he who gave life and breath to all men. And he has made of one blood all nations for to dwell on the face of the earth, so that they should seek and search after God, and find him by means of his love and his creation. He is not far from any one of you, for in him all live and move and have their being, 
and as some of your wise men have said, all are his kindred. Yes, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. There is no mystery about these words when you thoroughly understand them. The mystery disappears when they are understood. There cannot be one particle of substance that is not of God. Every particle in the whole universe must be of God, for it is God alone who is expressing himself. And I and the Father are one. There is no separation between us. Now therefore man, being of the family of God, is not bound to worship resemblances made of gold or silver or stone, shapen by the skill and knowledge of man into resemblance of the deity. Yet when men heard of the resurrection of the dead, they mocked. Understand that the great truth of the omnipresence, the omnipotence, and the omniscience of God is complete. Know that it is he who lives, and he alone lives, in every living thing, because he created all of them. And he could not live apart from his creation, for he is omnipresent. If his creations were any way separated from him, he could not be infinite in nature. He could not be complete in himself. Every creation was created with the fundamental principle of love harmonizing every action, bringing into manifestation his divine nature. And when man becomes aware of this truth, then shall man create in himself the reflection of that perfect divinity, which will bring about this heaven on earth. And they mocked, because they heard of the resurrection of the dead. Yet how could there be anything dead in the living universe? How could there be anything dead in the eternal living God? Admittedly, there is change taking place everywhere, but there is nothing dead in that change. Every particle is a living particle which changes from one form to another. What ignorant man sees is death. What the enlightened man sees is the action of life. Ignorant man does not understand the law of transition from one state to another. Therefore, man creates in his own mind the illusion he calls death. Not one particle of the whole universe is dead. Every particle is alive, existing in God. Every particle, even in its process of change, is a living expression of life, and the fundamental principle under it is all the power of love flowing from the central font of love to its smallest creation. Your sense mind would cloud or hide the vision, the vision of the completeness of that which is divine in nature. But now you are in the secret place of the Most High, and He shall wipe away all tears from your eyes and there shall be no more death, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things pass away. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give freely of the fountain of living water to him who is a thirst. I am in myself the beginning and the end. I am he whom the prophets have spoken of. I am the Lord, the Christ that dwells in each and every one of you. And there is no separation between us, yet you have placed me so far away beyond your reach. In your own minds you have thought me unattainable, yet I am living in the secret chambers of your heart, urging you continuously to recognize me. This is the Christ that is born in the human family, the Christ that is born in every babe. It is the Christ that is eternal and lives after so-called death. It is the Christ in you that shall live forever. Even as the rivers flow out and refresh the earth, so can you release that stream of eternal life into the outer. The unseen spiritual substance is alone substantial and is the only reality that can be expressed in your personal life now. Your consciousness is the reflection of it. Your consciousness in the material or physical is the reflection of this eternal life expressing itself. And as you become more aware of it, it becomes more real to you. The brain, the nervous system, and the flesh of the body become filled with it. It raises the vibration of your mind to a state beyond your earthly existence. Yes, in time it will transform the body to make it that perfect instrument, for the divine in nature is the only reality. Use every opportunity to express that which you know. Let your love flow out and bless every brother, every sister, so that all your divisions will be swept away by the ocean of love welling up in human hearts and lives. When you bless a brother and a sister with this love, in and out of your own being flows the Christ love and life. Do not in any way disregard the truth that are written in the New Testament. If you express that which is true, you will also become true. Your true nature is divine. Let this nature become yours now. Because now is eternity. Every moment of life is now. Therefore remember not the past, nor be anxious for the future. The future is taken care of by you living now. 
You must all come to the understanding of the omnipresence that fills all space, knows nothing of past or future, but is eternally present. The same yesterday, today, and forever. When you begin to know that all time is the present, you cease to long. You cease to long for things to come, and a great strain drops from you. How many of you are straining today? Because you are not living in the omnipresent, that is omnipresent. You live in a past and a future and miss the glorious expression of the divine life now. Peace will come into your soul. Things that troubled you before will no longer beset you. You will not be burdened with the things of the world because you will know that all that is mine is thine. Spirit is all power and directs all things, but if you stand on the outside looking in, then there is no possibility of you ever partaking of the feast spread before you. But if you will come inside, you can partake of the feast now, and there will never be any other time but now. When you gain this understanding, you eager souls, who feel that you must accomplish so much in a given time, will come to know that love and service are pleasure and rest. These words seem strange to you at first, because you do not understand them. To rest in the Lord means to be always with the Lord. And as the Lord is the supreme expression of the Almighty, knowing this, there is no fear, there is no doubt, and life becomes a joy. Only when you are burdened with the cares of the world is there sorrow. Lift up your hearts and rejoice in the fact that your Father knoweth that you are in need of, and has prepared everything for you. The table is already set. You can come into the feast now if you will, and partake of all that you are capable of. The only thing that is necessary is your capacity to receive. You will renew your energy and unfold wider avenues for further experiences with a sense of peace and quiet that comes from that which does not consider time or space as an essential factor. For it knows no time or space, being ever present and eternal. To live in the spiritual is to live in reality, not spasmodically and in limits. How can there be any time or space in infinity? Know that you live in the mind of God that fills all space, for there is nowhere where it is not. If you truly know that you are the Christ of God that exists eternally and is ever-present, the animating and creative power within the mind, then there can be no time or space. You can reach the state where there is no time or space and enter into the completeness of the Lord thy God that dwells in your soul. The Lord is the only power there is. I am the Lord. Love is the eternal, ever-present and glorious life now, which is a rest and a joy, a satisfaction too full to make you look backward or forward when you know that love is the ever-present love now. The soul who has realized this moves in the sufficiency of the presence that is ever active in the present and never in the past or future. Think over this carefully so that your joy may be full. I am the ever-present love. It was this love that I saw so clearly. I knew that God was love, and to be his son, that I must be love also. I found there could be nothing else for me but love, and no matter what was done to me, I still knew that I must remain the son of God, the ever-present love that knew no past or future, no sin nor death. Lazarus come forth was to speak from the spiritual plane, realizing only the ever-present life. If you can understand these words, you will realize that life that is eternal and ever-present. You can also speak the word if your consciousness can grasp the reality of it, and what you speak shall manifest because it is created in the now. You are affected by suggestions that come from without, suggested by the conditions surrounding you. You believe in death and decay, but in reality there is no death nor decay. There is only change, and this is life. If you could see this ever-present life beyond all change and become consciously aware of it, then I say that every particle of your whole body would be filled with it. I am the Lord. I change not. Open your eyes and see within yourself this mighty truth. You can be just as much of God as you are prepared to manifest. Christ, the Son of God, in the heart of humanity reaches out to man, urging him to awaken to his divine consciousness. For the Christ in each and every one is alive forever. There is eternal peace in the heart as you recognize this truth. I am the Lord thy God. I am one with the Father. The Father and I are never apart. We are always working together in you. The seven acts of Christ became actual to you now, at this moment, instead of belonging to a past period. 
The Christ experience is the birth of life in the temple that is not made with hands. The symbol of the divine child in the arms of Mary, the mother, is but the symbol of the Christ being born in every babe. The Father is individualized in each and every one, thus manifesting the birth of Christ, the eternal Son of God, into earthly life. Look around you and look at each other and say, Whence did you come? Only the Father knoweth. The anointing is the consecrating of the life to God. Then cometh the awakening of the Christ in the temple that is made by God alone. According to your realization, the Christ manifests in you, so do you consecrate your life to God. Then comes the temptation. Temptation was in the world for Christ to overcome. I have overcome the world. The crucifixion means that everyone is crucified. All must pass through their own gates of Gethsemane. Some pass it through one way, some another. Thus you are purified through your experience. The greatest of all experiences was that I could lay down my life through the crucifixion to take it up again, not for my own benefit, but for the benefit of all who live. And those who believeth in me will never die, for they have already found the secret of eternal life. Then comes the resurrection, the resurrection of the soul out of this mortal body. The Christ is the Spirit of God manifesting in the flesh. The ascension is the true recognition of this reality, the true realization of the eternal Christ. The Christ is in you, and nothing can avail from without. The evolution of the one soul exalts the whole race, that they may be all one. The complete understanding of time as the only present factor, with neither past nor future, would remove false ideas and inherited ills. Only the good that man does has any vitality, then cease to uphold the working out of ignorance and sin and things of the past. Most people's minds are overburdened with the power of sin. The ignorance in the world and the sin in the world are all they can see. You cannot see the Christ through ignorance and sin. You can only see the Christ through the love of God, the complete and perfect expression of the Father of love in His Son, who lives forever in the present. I am the Son of God through love. So also must you become the sons and daughters of God through love. In no other way can you become true sons and daughters of God. You are born sons and daughters of God because Christ the Spirit of God is in you. When Christ is realized, you will know yourself to be. Then the flood of love flows through the heart that understands this is beyond the conception of any human soul that has not yet awakened. In your physical sense, you make both good and evil seem of equal power. This is but theorizing with mortal sense. It is not the truth of reality. In God, there is neither good nor evil. God is the complete, perfect expression now. If you say that the omnipresent God is good and that evil exists also, then your reason is at fault. How can evil exist in the omnipresent good? Your misconception causes you to believe that evil exists. Do not theorize, but allow the love of God to express itself through you, and you will find that which makes you fear that which hinders your true expression will dissolve away into nothingness where it belongs. Think, and you will see that it is your own mind that you are creating fear and evil, for it does not and cannot exist in the omnipresence of God. Love is the only reality and is ever-present. Then realize that this ever-present is eternity, free from all conditions. Darkness is but the absence of light. When your hearts are full of love, there can be no darkness in the soul. For love is the light of the world. Truth is the search for the light of the world. Love is the first cause. And when you find this truth, you have found everything. As love casteth out fear, so does love cast out all that is contrary to the true nature. Fear is a thought power generated by the self through lack of understanding and has the temporary effect of interpreting the flow of life through the soul and body. Would you fear if you knew that you were the Lord? Would you fear if you knew that the Christ was your real self? Would you fear if you knew that God alone existed, and it was He who was expressing Himself, and that you, His creation, could never be separated from Him? Look to the cross and see what lessons it brings you. Would you deny the Father, even though you were scourged and crucified with nails through hands and feet? Your only strength lies in Him, who is with you always, who created you like unto himself, love. 
Fear has the effect of changing the body through chemicalization, but to overcome these conditions you apply the antidote of love, the only permanent power in the universe. Every thought, every movement, every action has a chemical change upon your body. You are continuously changing your body structure through fear and anxiety. This is in harmony. But love is harmony and healing for soul and body. Love is the power that overcomes all things and is working through all nature. God is expressing himself, sustaining the body, the temple not made with hands. When you let go of your fears, you will find that your God nature will bring back the normal state of the body, which is harmony. Nothing has been brought into being except through the Christ. As John said, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, and only through the Word did everything come into being. I am that Word. I am the Word of God. I am the life. I am the Lord. See clearly this truth in yourself, knowing that that which is possible to me is also possible to you if you will believe in me. Peace and calm will come into your hearts when you know that you are passing through all the stages of the Christ from the birth to the ascension. Love is power and life's true expression. Love pours forth from its fountain into one continuous stream and is the only power there really is. Love is a life energy passing through the body. Love is a passion of great power in the heart. Love is the protective agency in every living soul. Love flows through all planes of being. Love is the foundation of all divine action and is the salvation of the race. When you realize that this love is within yourself, then the mighty power grows from within you. No power comes from without. Love pours forth from its source in one continuous stream and is the only real power there is. The soul and body, they are sustained by it. It is the rapture in the heart, the protector of the soul and body. All divine action is based upon the love of God. All are subject to the divine. The more you know this, the more like God you become. All are subject to the same power, for there is no other power but the power of the infinite living life. Therefore, the omnipresence of his divine nature is a reality. Love is the only power that exists in the whole universe. Everything responds to it. Flowers, animals, humans, and angels all respond to love and adoration. Love being God, it must be the greatest power there is. Love harmonizes everything. Love cannot be separate from anything in nature, for it is the cause behind all true manifestation, and will remain when all other conditions are removed. Do not think that the Father has left you when you find yourself in distress. He is making you more perfect a more perfect instrument through which he can manifest his grown creative power. Ignorance has no principle in itself, just as error has no principle. Mathematics has a principle, but error can have none. For when the error is corrected, it disappears. Therefore you learn that ignorance and error have no power of their own. The prophet wrote in Proverbs, My son, eat this honey because it is good, and this honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, when thou hast found it, then thou shalt be rewarded, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Love is a secret balm that all can use, the learned and the untutored, the wise and the foolish. It speaks all languages, and it is the soul's heaven of rest. The position you hold in the world means nothing. What means most to you is your capacity to receive and give divine love, the true expression of God himself. God is spirit, and spirit is life. Life is love, and love is a vital force in all things. It is the harmony in all things. Then we must worship in love if we would attain a consciousness of God. Idols and images are but symbols in the mind, and we gain little from them. We must realize the love of God. Christ is the spirit of God, and he has been given all power in heaven and earth through love. People are mystified by the healings that took place 2,000 years ago, but there is very little difference in the healing that takes place in your midst today. The only difference is the fact that it may be a different personality used, but it is the same Christ that heals. The real is the principle of love. God made the universe by pure thought, positive and creative, which is the expression of his nature, love. Then love is a union between God and mankind. This divine energy is the eternal link that holds us fast to him, who made us in his own image and likeness. So mankind becomes the vehicle for the expression of love, and this is a true science of living. 
As we gaze upon the fountain of love, God's nature becomes our nature. What I see the Father do, I do likewise. It is no longer strange to you now that my thoughts become the healing power that changes the ether of disease and death to that of health and life. But the power of the holy thought, your bodies will also be changed from carnal flesh to spirit form. All are sons and daughters of God by birth, and all become sons and daughters of God through understanding and love. There is nothing so great in the heart of man as the expression of his Christ nature. There is no greater power in all the world. By love I heal, by love I live. Through true understanding, the truth is revealed that we are all sons and daughters of God, and from this point alone you become a greater civilization upon the earth. The love of God through the Christ must dwell in each and every one of you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. And when you pray, believe you have received that which you have asked for, and ye shall have it. When you ask, ask in the mind of God. It is then established in the Spirit. And what is established in the Spirit must come forth in form, provided you make yourself receptive to it through understanding faith. You shall all gain your inheritance, even in the darkness that surrounds you, for the light that lighteth the world is within yourself, and can never be extinguished. We are all joint heirs to all that is God's, when we attain to an understanding heart full of love. Son, thou art ever with me. All that is mine is thine. Through my lips, to unawakened earth, comes the trumpet of truth. The Lord thy God is one Lord, and this is the infinite spirit within all mankind. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness. He will enjoy the light of life. The Pharisees said, You are testifying to yourself. Your evidence is not valid. Is it not the same today? I replied to them, Though I do testify to myself, my evidence is valid, because I know where I have come from and where I am going to. Whereas you do not know where I have come from or where I am going to, you judge by the outside. I judge no one, and though I do judge, my judgment is true, because I am not by myself. There is myself and the Father who sent me. I am the resurrection and the life. Peace be with you. O eternal Father of love, we rejoice in thy presence. We know thou art with us always, and we can never be apart from thee. We are expressing thy life and love. Thou didst send me into the world to prepare others for that which is to come, and thy shall become thy angels to administer to others thy love. This is the joy of life. Let this joy be theirs, as it is mine for ever and ever. Make it their watchword in the morning, noon and night, so that they shall always be at peace. Even if ignorance darkens the light of thy presence, help them see the divine truth. I am the Lord, I have been given power and dominion over all things. Thy peace I leave with them, for thy peace is eternal, and as they seek it, so shall they find it. Amen. The scribes remark, This was the first talk to us by the Master. Those present were amazed beyond words, for most had never before seen a transfiguration. A chapter